going on? It's Charles Bootenston here, and we're going to be talking about legacy letters. Okay, this is something that was brought up on a coaching call last Friday. It was a group coaching call. Uh, it was about 100 of us, and we all have the same coach. And we get on, and we share, and people kind of collaborate, which is really nice. And we're all in real estate, and we all have this coach who wants to hold us accountable and take us to the next level. So he said something very interesting during that call. He said, write a legacy letter 20 years from now. 25 years from now, from today's date, what is going on? How much money you have in the bank? What is your family? What is your relationship? What is your health? What's your housing? What's your travel? What's your leisure? What's your religion, spirituality? In other words, not what is it, but what's actually happening? How often are you going to the gym? What does your body look like? What does the relationship with your spouse and your kids look like? And he was done talking and he said, does anyone have any questions? So I raised my hand and I said, uh, you know, I, I did this at a Tony Robbins event probably five or six years ago, uh, probably longer now, maybe 10 years ago. I wonder if that letter is still actually in my apartment. That's, a, that's an interesting question because I never read it after I wrote it. So it'd be very interesting actually, because I think it was actually a letter for one year from now, which is more realistic. 20 years from now is insane. So. I asked the question, I said, you know, I, I did this at a Tony Robbins event. Can you go into a, a little bit more detail? And someone actually interrupted in the group and they said, hey, listen, I got it. The guy said, he goes, uh, listen, I'm uh, 65 and 20 years from now, I'm going to be 85. And if God willing, I'm still around and kicking and playing with my grandkids and everything else. He said, this is what I'm going to be writing. I recommend this is how you write it for yourself. You're writing how your grandkids are going to be raised. You're writing for how your kids are going to be raised. What is their life? What is their mindset? What are their values? What, are their, what do they care about most? What do they not really care about? In other words, all the areas that my coach talked about, which is health, mindset, reading, and things like that, you kind of want to instill the positive things that you've learned onto your kids or you know, hopefully they take up reading, hopefully they take up health, but I'm going to be living a healthy lifestyle. My wife is going to be living a healthy lifestyle. I don't have a wife and no prospects of one right now, but once you have the kids, you kind of already need to be living the lifestyle. It's not like, yeah, maybe you could change, I guess. But what he was saying is your kids' kids. In other words, the legacy, a legacy. And that hit me because I heard that from... Uh, what's his name? The the biohacker uh, Green something. I forgot his name. He, he wrote a couple of books and he and he has a literal letter on how to structure the family when it comes to meeting structure, the morals, the ethics, the values, the mission statement, the vision of the family. And when he's gone, this document is going to live on. He also has something. This was actually from someone else where this is actually from someone else called uh, Billy Carson. And he said that for his family, for his will, they have to live up to certain standards. They have to be fully gainfully employed. They have to be blah, 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 and go all the way down. And if you have that, then some of the money will be released five years after my death. Some of the money will be released five years after that. And then he said for the grandkids, he said that you can only get the money at 21. And these are the standards you have to have. And then the rest is going to be at 25. So in other words, there's standards to the legacy letter. It's not just this pie in sky, because for me, I can go pie in sky. I can go 20 houses, private jets and everything else. Like I'm going to be writing all of that. But here's the most important thing. And this is why I recommend everyone to do it. I literally went one line. I'm looking at the document right now. I went one line. Okay. It's Thanksgiving 2024 comma I'm 57 years old I stopped like that's powerful that's powerful that's powerful for a multitude of reasons because you hear numbers you know when you're 18 30 years old seems like you're already you know near death then when you're 30 you look at someone that's 40 and you're like oh my god then when you're my age, 37, you look at someone that's 40 and you go, that's not that big a deal. You look at someone that's 30 and you're like, that's pretty young. And then you look at someone that's 21, you're like, they're an infant. So 
through all of this essentially is perspective. And not only is it perspective, but to future plan 20 years and then to say, I'm going to be 57, you know, God willing, I'm still here, but I'm going to be 57. That, that hit me. I actually stopped writing. I had a bunch of things that I wanted to get in there. And one of them was to go to Kona, to have a house in Utah, to have a penthouse in New York City, to be flying private or at least uh, charter the planes. And by that time, it's going to be a lot less expensive. It's kind of like Uber. Uber made it very cheap. If a bunch of people are going into the airplane business, then it's going to come down in price. But the reason I say that is it puts things into perspective. And you ask the one question that Simon Sinek all, always talks about, which is why? What's your why? And on my last call, I was talking with my coach and he was like, uh, so you told me your why. And my why was actually kind of like, 2023 is going to be a big year that I'm really going to have to change things around. Okay. And the reason I say that is because I'm in such a predicament right now of getting to the next level that if I don't change literally dramatically and radically next year, then it's kind of like, yeah, no, I'm not going to get the other things I really want. You know, like this legacy letter, I should just crumple up and throw it into a trash bin and light it on fire. So what I have is what is my wealth? And at that time, I want to be cash flow independent. I also want to be doing things that I really, really like, which is speaking on public stages. I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be building out the company. Really, I only care about my life is business, triathlons and reading. That's it. I don't care about movies. I don't care about shows. I don't care about sports. I don't care about music. I think I already said that. I, I don't care about, I, I literally anything entertaining, social media, I don't care about. I don't care about TikTok. I don't care about likes and follows. And I really don't care. It's just, yes, like it's nice to have people say, oh, that video was good or money. Like I'm here. What I've noticed over the last year and a half since COVID actually started, or two and a half years, it's crazy, two and a half years of your life just evaporated. You know, like it went so quick, those two and a half years. And you look at perspective right there, but you look at perspective of how far I've actually come from my mindset, my confidence, um, even the food in my stomach, in my mindset and everything else. If I eat incorrectly, my body's... So when I'm 57... I'm going to have to have a very stringent diet because at that time, things start breaking down. Things start don't move as well. Things you're not as quick and everything else. So it's going to include on this list one glass of wine a week. Like, I'm not looking to get drunk all the time. Processed food is out of the question. I'm also going to want very healthy foods. So I highly recommend that you do a legacy letter and date it today or whenever it is, you know, it's Easter, say 2045, it's Thanksgiving, it's Christmas, whatever, what, make it a major holiday. Because if you say October 1st, eh, it's not that big of a deal. But if you go, it's Christmas and I'm surrounded by a bunch of people, what is happening? Who's there? What do you look like? Where are you? What's been happening? What have you accomplished? That's the biggest thing. What have you accomplished? And then ironically enough, the why starts coming into perspective because the why that I originally had about why I want to do the things I want to do, the crazy things I want to do that are on this letter, it's not big enough. I don't have kids. I don't have a wife. I can't, I'm not doing it really for anyone else but myself. Maybe the kids that I don't have and the wife I don't have right now, but I'm gonna tell you right now, uh, once you hear an age that you used to think was extremely old, just like this guy on the Zoom call at 65 years old, and he said, listen, I'm gonna be 85. Imagine that, you're 65 years old and then you're gonna say, I'm 85? So I highly recommend people, we, we got to put some time into perspective here because we, we're here like that. That's it.
you got to live with some gratitude. You got to live with some smarts. We got to start making some right decisions, okay, when it comes around what really matters. What really matters, okay? Really. Does social media really matter? Honestly. <laughs> like, when, when the last two months, and I'm going to leave it at this, the last two months has really put a lot of things into perspective, including all the research I did about this thing that we call reality. And it start, I started going into the quantum realm, and then I started going into the metaphysical realm, and I started piecing them together, and I go, oh, okay. So not only is this a thing that I thought was a physical thing everywhere, and I'm just walking in this physical thing, it's not. And then you start saying, okay, so if that's it, I can essentially create what I want. <laughs> Because nothing's physical, everything's vibrating, everything's a frequency, it's all energy, and it's like, I'm energy, you're energy, everything's around us energy, then they go to the lowest denominator, and it's ones and zeros, the Boolean algorithm, and it's crazy, because time is completely constructed, you know, money is completely, like, everything is completely dis constructed, it's all, it's all man-made. And then once you get to that, and you start really caring about what's important, the pinnacle is health, the second is relationships, and the third is very close, it's wealth, it's money. Because to be honest, right now, it's getting harder to say, you know, spend the same amount of money on the things that you bought last year or even five years ago. Or even make as much as you did, say, five years ago when it comes to inflation and taxes and the cost of items. Not just, you could be making 100000 but if things are actually costing you 110000 So, legacy letter. Please do it, because it changed my mindset immediately. All right, have an amazing day. Leave your comments.